We want to now dive into the governor uh, story out there in New York, Andrew Cuomo. I mean, what a disaster this thing has turned into him, uh, into for him. I mean, look, the guy wrote a book <laughs> about how great he was at tackling COVID. But let's be honest, that's like Donald Trump writing a book on best Twitter etiquette practices, if you know what I mean. Oy Gavolt. All right. Joining me now to discuss all of this is Jerry Kasser, the chairman of the New York State Conservative Party. Uh, Jerry, really appreciate you being here. You're welcome. Well, look, I mean, like if this was like a space mission conducted by NASA, we would be saying, Albany, we have a problem. Your take. Well, Albany, uh, New York, America, we have a big problem here. We have a problem that from day one uh, should have been a concern because 10,000 nursing home deaths was certainly a problem. But many of us here, particularly individuals who had family in nursing homes, my mother was in a nursing home, knew that there was a lot going on in these nursing homes that was not being reported, although we could not prove it. I mean, there were advocacy groups. They were just families. It was just generally known that things were worse than they were reporting. And a lot of this was due, we knew, because of a March executive order from the uh, or a order from the Department of Health signed off by the governor, which indicated that individuals who are in recovery from COVID could be sent back to nursing homes for the recovery. And it became evident that that was a gigantic mistake. It became evident to the public. It didn't apparently become evident to the governor because even when warned him and his health department that this was creating a problem, they refused to reverse the order. They wanted to blame the federal government, which was inaccurate. It was proven to be inaccurate. And now, many, many months later, through an apparent mistake in an admission by the secretary to the governor, who is the highest appointed figure in the state government, the secretary to the governor, the highest appointed figure, she admitted to the Democratic members of the state legislature that they were involved in a cover-up and that the number was actually 50 percent higher than they were admitting to, which was a terrible number to begin with. Mm -hmm. So now you have it. You have a cover-up emanating from the highest appointed person in the government, appointed by, the gov by Governor Cuomo. And now we play off of that because that's where we are right now. Well, and Jerry, here's the problem, I would think, for Cuomo. He's starting to lose Democrats. I, I, I mean, they want to take away some of, what, his powers over what he wants to do with COVID. And, it, and it's not just that. They, they've got egg on their face, the whole party up there. Well, the... Um this is a unique situation where conservatives and progressives united against the center of the Democratic establishment, which is led by the governor, because both sides understand that you cannot allow something like this to continue. A crime was very likely um, committed, and that particular, right, that particular crime is being looked at, or the possibility of a crime, by the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office in Brooklyn. And um, we'll see where that goes. But we're talking about uh, dozens of state Democratic legislators on an audio vi video call with the secretary to the governor, where she makes it clear for strictly political purposes, they refused to release the information. As though the president of the United States was a politician operating as a politician, not as the president of the United States. So you take a crime, you throw on another piece of cynicism, and you end up with Cuomo. Crime and, and, and you know, cynic, a cynic view of, of how you conduct state business in this state. And um, frankly, you get a guy that's ending a third term on a really negative note if not a criminal note. Yeah, so, so Jerry, now we've got word, right, about uh, him threatening, if you will, this state representative, uh, uh, Representative Kim down there in, uh, is, it, is it Brooklyn? I'm not, I'm not sure if it's... No, no, he's over in Queens. Queens, he's I'm in sorry, Queens. Queens. What do you make, what do you make of, of this? Because now, now, he, now we got Cuomo basically uh, harassing and threatening uh, folks over this and, and a possible so, uh, cover-up. Uh, so look, I had um, I had worked for a number of years for the state legislature, and I can tell you that I was very much aware on a first, on a you know on a, on a the basis of the fact that I worked there of legislators periodically getting phone calls directly from the governor or his secretary, the senior, the secretary to the governor, threatening them for one reason or another. 
The situation with Kim, though, was more blatant in the sense that this assemblyman's uncle died in a nursing home uh, from COVID, and the assemblyman has a certain emotional level of involvement in this, yeah. which, made, which made it even more atrocious that he could get such a bullying phone call. No one is surprised by this. People are finally beginning to react. It's long overdue, but maybe we'll get some justice for the people of the state of New York and these families uh, when, when this, as this thing begins to become adjudicated. So, Jerry, let me ask you about the justice portion of this. You say as it becomes adjudicated, uh, is, is there any sense at all what they're doing out there in California with Newsom and they want to impeach him and everything and remove him from office? Well, what kind of mechanisms are in place in New York at all about some sort of effort in that regard? Well, we do not have a recall or, for that matter, initiative and referendum. And I can say as the state chairman of the party, we support that. But I will tell you this. The assembly minority, the assembly Republicans, have put in a, a resolution today, and I know they're doing it with the Senate re, uh, Republicans, to um, create, uh, under the authority of the state constitution, the first steps in an impeachment process, a commission on impeachment, which would go through a formal, um, in, which would begin a formal legislative investigation. Mm -hmm. Remember, we, 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 there are many talking about impeachment. There are others talking about seeing that he doesn't win re-election. And of course, there's the uh, the other the, the the group that is actually talking about potentially criminal indictments, you really can't find anyone that is not on the governor's staff that has anything good to say about the governor <laughs> these days. And it's a nonpartisan, uh, as you indicated earlier, activity. So, Jerry, I want to understand what you're saying. Is there a mechanism? There's not a mechanism for recalling the governor in the state. But no, New York, say it again. New York, New York, New York State is. Uh, not really as progressive in some ways as one would hope. <laughs> but what about, but, but when I say recall, there's a difference between recall and impeachment? No, the whole thing is the same. No, no, if you, well, there is a difference. Recall could be done by the voters. Impeachment can only be done by the legislature. Well, but is there any sort of sense that there's a movement there, a, a potential oh, movement yes. there? Yeah, there is a, there, but it's by Republicans. I haven't seen any Democrats join it yet, mm -hmm. but let's see what happens. Uh, there are certainly Democrats that are that have made very, very uh, extraordinarily strong statements. This, this first move is being made by the GOP in the Assembly and Senate, and they're in the minorities. They, they, mm -hmm. we do not control either house of the state legislature. Our side. Yeah, Jerry Casser, really appreciate your time. Thanks for thanks for uh, drilling down and explaining a lot of this to us. Good luck to you. You're very welcome. Keep up the good work. All right, Thank appreciate you. it, Jerry. All right.